There's a public meeting to discuss next year's UFO festival tonight. Russell City officials want to recap this year's fest and get community input about the future. They're looking to create committees to plan the event. Discussions will also involve community involvement and vendor and sponsor possibilities. The meeting takes place at the convention center at 530. All right, Shalom. This is Hara Wan Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say Kal Halayim, Le Yahawa, Pahashim Yahushai, Pahashim Harakar Kodash, Mahamaf. Double line to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim. And Nagwatim and children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Um, yeah, you see they got the um, the UFO um, museum or whatever they call it. Damn celebration of festival coming up. All right. All, all gathered in confusion and wickedness, man. Because the angels don't look like that. You know, little green demons with big, uh, uh, big, um, giant black eyes. All right. That, that's not how they look. Now, the the image that they keep showing, these little green, or these grays or whatever they want to call them, that goes back to the ancient the ancient Druids. All right? They're the ones that uh, used to see demons and shit. And um, when they'd be on their damn uh, psychotic drugs, the shit that they'd be doing in their pagan rituals, people like Alistair Crowley, he even drew an image of some demon that he uh, saw called... Uh, Jin or Zen? I think it was Zen. It could have been Jin, but Jin means trap, right? Or a trap. But there you go. I'll get it real quick. All right. This is one of the images of uh, Alistair Crowley, who was a straight devil worshiper, 100%, you know, devil uh, worshiper and a modern day uh, druid. But he was a, a wicked ass painter, a mason. That's fucking psycho that drew these images. And that's what they used to do. They just, just conjure up demonic images. Everybody know Esau when you was little in school and you, you'd you be drawing apples and trees and shit like that. And you look over to, to the left and you see Esau, your classmate drawing. He drawing fucking little demons and gargoyles and Nordic... Um, you know, stories and shit, and idols and all kind of weird shit, man. That's what they into. Or they draw a fucking house burning down, the people stabbed up and bleeding. Every, that's what their mind is demented like that. All right. So when they see uh, a little images like this or little demons in their mind, they draw on it. They draw it out. And then now, since the ancient Druids put it out there, with their paganistic beliefs, all right, distorting the truth, they put these little images out there, and it became, uh, in America, it became a commodity. People selling it, selling the idea. Look at the movie E.T., Extraterrestrials, all right? All right, you have, um, you have also the atheists, and they, they, um, they don't believe in the Bible or any power that's above them, all right? There's only one true power, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And there's even artifacts and so much proof to prove that King David exists, existed, that the ancient Israelites existed, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is written on the uh, steel of Nebuchadnezzar, all right? Um, and then you had uh, yep, still the Nebuchadnezzar, and you had uh, uh, you know, stories written with Nebuchadnezzar on their steels about the God of of Israel. All right, and Cyrus the Great, he wrote the decrees, all the way down to Artaxerxes, following the, the decrees, um about the God of Israel Israel and the children of Israel coming back to their land. So yeah, man, it's so much proof to prove that our God exists 
in its true form. And even the prophecies today. But um, Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. See, they got to they gotta see it to believe it. All right. And us, we believe without seeing. We believe in the truth without seeing the truth. These guys, these idiots, they believe in lies um, without seeing the truth. And when they see the truth, they still going to uh, be stuck in their head with their lies. So when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, man. All right. Confusion, not knowing what's going on, that brings fear. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for. See that even these churches, these Muslims, whoever, man, and especially these people that believe in damn aliens and shit, little green or gray uh, people or little demons and shit, or that believe that Area 51 is a a hub for UFOs. No, that's not true, man. Area 51 is a nuclear testing site. The mili military always tell everybody that. All right? Um, and advanced technologies and shit like that. All right? So it's all uh, uh, fiction. All right? So the chariots are real. What Esau calls UFOs, unidentified flying objects. They can't identify it. But it's identified in the scriptures. We know that. But in Ezekiel, right? Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. So it's going to be, it's going to be on, uh, it's going to be so far beyond all that they look for. So they're looking for little green grays to step out. Little green men with long ass fingers and shit and big eyes and big ass heads. I'm talking about take me to your leader and shit. See, so Esau, man, it started in the 1950s, especially. Or 1930s with the Great Depression. Then they created the movie theaters to uh, to put people to sleep in the middle of the Depression. They started bringing movies and theaters and people started becoming actors and watching movies to escape from the reality. See that? Then they threw their little beliefs up in there with Spielberg, E.T., extraterrestrials. I mean, that became one of the biggest movies around the world. So to push that idea into the masses of the people, their minds, pushing into their mind. And it's still there. Like everybody grew up thinking aliens were real just because of that movie E.T. All right. Or oh, that, that movie, I forgot what it was, man. Uh, it's a good one to watch with your children. Um, Star something. I forgot what it was called, man. But with a little Edomite boy, he'd get on this damn chariot and it'd take him all around everywhere. Uh, but it ain't important. Let me move on. So it's going to be so far beyond all that they look for. All right. So now this is the prophet Ezekiel, um, who was around during the, uh, the 5th century uh, BC. And he saw the visions of the chariots and the angels. All right. And I'm, I'm not going to get too detailed, but I'm going to skip around. And you get to the point, because it shows clearly that the angels look like men. All throughout the scriptures, you hear the angels looking like men. They have their duties, their jobs, and their employment, but they look like men. They look like us, all right? Ezekiel 1, or oh, we look like them. Ezekiel 1 and 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Kibar that the um, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of Yahweh, right? Because Ezekiel was one of those um, top of the crops or twigs that got uh, cropped off uh, during the time of uh, the siege of Nebuchadnezzar. All right. And this was around 597 this was when he first got his vision around 597 and then he got another one around 592 so the spirit kept dealing with him and showing him things 
So in the fifth day of the month, which was the first year of King Jehoiakim's captivity, right? Jehoiakim was in captivity around 597 or 598, right? And the word of Yahweh was expressly, uh, came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzai, and in, this, in, and in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Kabar, and the hand of Yahweh was there upon him. All right, so there you go. Right? Okay, let's make sure. So now it says, The word of Yahweh came expressly at right, verse 4 and I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, and a great cloud, and a fire. And a, a fire unfolding itself. I mean, it was moving towards them. Just like on Independence Day. We know that. Brightness was about it. Or the lights or the, the, the fire around it. And out of the mist thereof, as the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. So there was light coming out of the middle of the fire. All right. With a yellowish, a yellowish uh, hue to it. Now, this is the point. Also, out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. All right. And the word beast is another word for creatures. And these are the four archangels that are spoken of throughout the scriptures. Gabriel, Uriel, Raphael, and Michael. And this was their appearance. All right. So this is how they look. They had the likeness of a man. And, that's just, and they got period after that. You ain't got to go into their duties and their purposes. But it says right there, they had the likeness of a man. They look like men. All right? Look just like Yahweh Shah. All right? Now, this is the book of Tobit. And this was written around the time of um, Sennacherib, you know, when he died in 681 B.C. All right? So, um, the Assyrian. But check this out. Uh, Tobit was going to send Tobias on a trip um, to receive some money. From somebody that you know he deposited some money, like you would like you would do today with a friend or a family member, and then when you need it, you go back and get it. You know, it was like the original banking system that was set up and amongst our people as well. We had a welfare system too. But um, Tobit five and one, that's speaking about the angel Raphael. You know, um. In, in the Hebrew, be Rapah Ya'Allah. Tobias then answered and said, Father, I will do all things which thou hast commanded me. Right? To Tobias was speaking to his father Tobit. And they were of the tribe of Naphtali. All right. But how can I receive the money seeing I know him not? So he was like, how can I go on this trip when I don't even know who to look for? Yeah, they didn't have internet. So they had to just figure it out in the whole city or forest full of people. Then he gave him the handwriting and said unto him, Seek thee a man which may go with thee. So what he had to find a man, not no little green demons and shit. Seek thee a man which may, which may go with thee whilst I yet live and I will give him wages and go and receive the money. So he's like, go find a brother to go with you on this on this journey, and I'm gonna give him a uh, I'm gonna pay him as well. But he knew not. I'm so lucky. Verse four. Therefore, when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael that was an angel. So the angels are like men. That's just it, man. All right, but he knew not, and he said unto him, Canst thou go with me to Rages? All right, so now, check this out. All right, this is the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whose names were Ananiah, Mishael, and uh, uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. All right. <clears throat> now, um, back in Daniel, uh, Chapter 3. All right. 
All right, now, it says Daniel chapter 3. Now, in the, <clears throat> you had somebody named Nebuchadnezzar who started ruling around 605 B.C. And he threw um, these Israelites into the fiery oven. All right, we already know the story, but in the midst of that, we know Yahawashai was in the oven with him. And he was like Iceman. He put a cold mist around him to where they couldn't get feel any of the fire. So now to get to the point, when they saw this angel into the in, uh, enter the furnace or oven with these brothers, he looked like a man. He looked just like them. Daniel 3 and 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right? The same men that threw them into the furnace, they got destroyed as well. So the same men that violate you in this society and women, um, the troops, police, whoever, they're going to be destroyed as well. All right. That puts you into the affliction and adversity in, this, in, the, in these times. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the furnace, fiery, burning, fiery furnace, man. They're like an oven, you know. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste because he was watching it like a TV and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men, three men into the midst of the, fir the fire? Then answered and said unto, they answered and said unto the king, true, O king. He answered and lo, and said, lo, I see four men loose. They, they weren't bound anymore. So at first it was three men that were tied up and they were on the ground in the fire. But out of nowhere, you saw four men unchained, not tied up anymore, walking in the midst of the fire. <laughs> and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of God. See that? So he, he that was Yahweh Shai, man. He was an angel. And he looked like a man in the spirit form and in this physical form. All right, man, do it this one, man. Just get to the point. Ezekiel 1. Um, there you go, 25. It says this, and this is going back to the same chariots that I read earlier. All right, uh, Ezekiel 1 and 25. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads. All right over the angels that showed up that look like men. Uh, and it says, um, over their heads, when they stood and had let down their wings, and above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of sapphire stone, and upon the likeness, and upon it the likeness of of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man upon it, above upon it. All right, so that was Yahweh sitting on the throne in the heavens. All right, so he got white and woolly hair, just like Yahweh Shai has. So this this is the depiction of the angels in heaven. I can go on many scriptures, but check this out. This is why it's going to happen to these people. All right, Zechariah 5 and 1. See, they're looking for the chariots, and, or they call them UFOs, UAPs, and all that. They got their Project Blue Beam, and they got their whole agenda and script laid out, man. They're going to try to make, like, uh, little green aliens, little demons. And that's why people are going to try to fight against the Lord. They're going to run. They're going to sell out to Esau. They're going to go to Egypt for help when they see these chariots pop up. And the army is going to turn the fight against the Lord because they're going to have it in their mind that those are little green demons, but they're really the angels of the Lord. All right. And Yahweh Shai himself, the son of man, the son of God as well. You know, Zechariah 5 and 1, 
Then I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll, the chariots. And he said unto me, What seest thou? You have different chariots. You have the circular ones. You have the ones that look like a ball. You have the ones that are elongated. All right. And I answered, and I see a flying roll. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Then, so it's basically as long as a football field. Enough space to walk around in. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, man. All right, this is the curse, man. It's going to be a curse to the wicked and these idiots that, that think that they're aliens. For Every one that stealeth shall be cut off on this, this side according to it. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. All right. So, so that makes the Lord angry when they, they sitting down here lying and coming up with all these idols and false images. You know, matter of fact. All right. Exodus 20 and 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images, man or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth, man. See, because they don't know what the hell. If you can't see it, why make some damn outlandish image of, of it? All right. Now, we may, you may have brothers that paint pictures or icon, um, icons of Yahweh, by, uh, the angels and Yahweh Shai. Or us in ancient times with Afros. Why? Because that's what the scriptures depict them as. It's just a depiction of what the scriptures say. And they might draw it up or paint it um, to do the reverse iconoclasm that happened um, in the Roman Empire when they destroyed all of our images, all of our paintings, the true depictions. But on top of that, with our people, the Lord said, what? We're not supposed to worship them either. Any images that we draw or make or sculpt. All right. Now you have people like atheists. They worship aliens in, in a sense. They don't believe in God, especially the God. Of, you know, they don't believe in God. All right. Yahweh. Instead, they believe that aliens are out there, a higher power than themselves. So in some indirect form they worship in these damn aliens or idols or imaginations all right so now wisdom of solomon 5 and 20 his severe wrath shall he sharpen for a sword and the world shall not fight i mean shall fight again with him against the unwise then shall the right aiming thunderbolts go abroad and from the clouds to the chariots as from a well-drawn bow shall they fly to their mark that lets you know there's the angels in there controlling these lasers or uh technology technology that's going to be on these chariots that esau calls ufos or uaps uaps but there's going to be angels in there that's going to be shooting precise beams and, and laser beams at these damn heathens and two-thirds of our people they're going to be zapping them like timing it perfectly you know what I mean? You know, the people going to be running. All right. Just like in the scriptures where it say, Yahweh Shai is the lamb in Revelation 5. Or it speaks about the angels being beasts. It's not saying they look like that. It's just saying that's their employment. That's their duties. All right. Yahweh Shai, his is, to, his is to be the lamb, the sacrificial lamb, the pure lamb. All right. Um, and innocence. But that's what he was set up to be, Revelation 6 and 13. But he looked like a man, all right? And the stars of heaven fell upon the earth, even as a fig tree cast of her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, all right? So that's talking about the missiles. So the Lord, the Lord going to send his spirit, and it's going to have the missiles shoot off, or have these nations shoot their missiles off. It's going to be shaking, right? And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. That's it. Atom or atomic uh, mushroom clouds. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. 
and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And he said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. All right. The face of him that sitteth on the throne. So he has his face. All right. Yahweh. So when you read Daniel chapter seven, it tells you he has white woolly hair and a, and a garment of white like snow. <clears throat> and the angels tremble at his presence. And you have um, Yahweh, the son of God, that, that looks like the son of man, just like men. And the angels, how they look. You read about Gabriel. You read about Raphael, as I just read. Let's get Gabriel. All right. Now, <clears throat> make this quick. This is the angel Gabriel, Gabar Allah, that came to see Zacharias and um, also Mary and Joseph. All right. And Elizabeth. It says about the birth of John and the birth of Yahweh. Luke 1 <clears throat> and 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord. So you want to know what the angels look like? Check this out. Standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Did they look like little green men? No. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, fear not, Zacharias, for, the, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. And thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. All right, so now I'm going to get to the point. <clears throat> the angel told him who he was right here, verse 19. And the angel answered, answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of Yahweh, and am sent to speak unto thee. And to show thee these glad tidings, right? Just like Raphael was sent. And he's, Raphael is uh, the angel that bears our prayers before the Father. All right? And Gabriel was sent to the people as well. All right? This is uh, Tobit 12 and 15. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels, which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the Holy One. All right, so, and um, just like Gabriel and, or uh, Uriel. All right, this is 2nd Ezra 4 and 36. The angel Uriel, who also would be called uh, Jeremiah, <coughs> or War Allah, which, which means uh, light of Yahweh, light of God, he came to visit Ezra's and show him many similitudes and mysteries and visions. All right. Second Ezra 4 and 36. And unto these things, Uriel, the angel, the archangel, gave them answer and said, even when the number of the seeds is fulfilled in you, for he have weighed the world in the balance. Right. So uh, check this out. All right. Daniel 12 and 1. And at that time, Shall Michael stand up, the great prince? So he's a great prince, a son of God as well, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never since was since there was a nation, even to the same time. All right, so this, this sticks to the point. These are the four archangels spoken of in Ezekiel, and they all resemble men. All right, sons of Yahweh. Yahweh looked like a man, or men look like Yahweh. According to Daniel chapter 7, and the angels all look like him as well. Not like some little green demons. <laughs>